just a little bit past 5.30. We'll call the meeting to order at 5.33. And first off, um, we'll have reception of guests. So if you folks would like to introduce yourselves. Corinne Stridesburg. Rosemary Morse, town clerk. Nicole Ferrier. <laughs> Excellent. That's the best title. <laughs> and just so that you all know us up here, um, maybe Vera, do you want to just introduce yourself? Vera Fraser. Peter Schober. Chris Winters, and the three of us are board members. Bill Kimball seems like we're ways away from the board, not meant to be the superintendent. <laughs> Aaron Boynton, principal. Great. Thanks, everybody. And just to point out at the start of the meeting, <clears throat> We're kind of forced into having a, an articles committee meeting tonight at 7 o'clock. So we're going to do our best to move this meeting along very quickly. So our goal here is to be finished by, um, by 7. So uh, forgive me if I try to move rapidly through some of these um, items on the agenda. So um, item 1.2 is agenda review and revisions. Um, does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda tonight? I don't. 1.3, uh, public comments and correspondence. Any of the folks attending tonight wish to make any public comments? All right. 1.4 is future meetings, just pointing out that we have an Articles of Agreement hearing. Uh, it's a public hearing Wednesday night at 6 p.m. at U32. And that's to um, consider um, some Articles of Agreement uh, potentially being proposed by an Act 49 committee which is meeting after this meeting tonight, uh, and that would be on some articles of agreement to put before the, potentially put before the voters in February. Um, so getting those articles ready to be uh, warned before then. Uh, we have on Monday night. That, that is postponed right now. <clears throat> the That's organizational meeting um, was scheduled. Uh, we have information that leads us to believe that that will be postponed because the parties to the lawsuit um, we have heard have come to an agreement to postpone all organizational meetings until a time later in February. So that's hot breaking news off the fresh off the presses. Um, we've received that email just recently this afternoon that that may be happening. We haven't confirmed that, I don't think. No, the AOE point, just told us to hold right now, and they're going to get us more later in the week. <clears throat> so we're on hold. The Monday night organizational meeting will not be happening. Chris, can you go back? Sure. Can you give me a little bit of free, like, so the lawsuit is where? So the lawsuit has been filed. <clears throat> the state. We uh, as a board saw an on We are so one of the parties to the us? lawsuit. I just want, like, Quick snippet of what sure. I, I'll tell you the best that I know. Um, we are a part of that, a party to that lawsuit. Uh, the state is defending that lawsuit, the attorney general's office. So the attorneys representing the towns are filing, have filed a motion for a stay with the judge. Um, that stay has not been granted, but the party on the other side, the attorney general's office representing the state, as I understand it. Um, has been speaking to the plaintiffs' attorneys, and they have agreed that there would be no action on the organizational meetings for, I don't know what the date is yet, but sometime in mid-February. The, the week of February 15th is what's being said right now for so organizational meetings. Putting it off, you know. This is literally less than an hour old. Five weeks or so to let them work out the perhaps the stay, perhaps <laughs> some other issues. Um, in any case, they they have agreed not to, for the, the state has agreed not to, the school has agreed, the school districts have agreed not to go ahead, I guess it's the state, the state as a party has agreed not to go ahead with any of the organizational meetings. Those are the ones that are called by the Secretary of Education um, for purposes of organizing the merged boards. So what does that mean for timeline if? We don't know. It we throws a wrench into the timeline. After that. I understand that. Right. right. Somebody it's a very out. tight timeline with the meeting on Monday. And there are all kinds of ramifications and dominoes that fall right. because of warnings. Yep. And 
and public meetings. And um, hopefully, we'll know more in the next couple of days as they try to sort this out. Um, again, we're all kind of victims of a very tight timeline and perhaps a not well thought out process. Um, but here we are, and we're going to do our best to deal with it. Uh, the other meeting, just to be aware of, is February 20th, our uh, carousel meetings at U32. Two point oh, the consent agenda approval of the minutes, dated uh, the minutes from December tenth. <clears throat> sure, everyone's had a chance to look at those. Any? I, am, I would move approval. Okay. Is there a second? Can I second but abstain because there wasn't at the meeting? Absolutely. Um, any? Um, yes, she does. If she abstains, it's a. Uh, Majority of those present in voting, so we'll be okay. If it's going to cause a problem, I'll just. No, nope, it's not a problem. And you should abstain if you weren't there. So, are there any? Um, it's been made and seconded. Are there any changes to the agenda? Any comments? I have no comments. I mean, sorry to the minutes. No. Nope. All right. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And abstentions, one. On to the discussion agenda. Item 3.1 is the town sewer easement. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chris, for having Come me. on up. I know you're on video, so I guess I'll just make the seat. The town of Berlin is looking to bring gravity sewer. This is Route 62, uh, Paint Turnpike North. Down Paint, Tur uh, Paint Turnpike North, down to the Chamber of Commerce building here, uh, and then from there, uh, uh, force me up to a manhole up near the hospital. Uh, what this what this allows the town to do, it eliminates a sewage pump station here behind the um, Honda dealership that all of the sewage that's currently uh, being collected of the upper part of the town here. It's pumped into a manhole over here by um, uh, Carroll Concrete. It'll eliminate the pump station requirement for the uh, existing at the firehouse, and it would eliminate the pump station here at the school. Um, and so I'm gonna put this down now and show you some just a greater detail map. So um, the this is uh, 62, Payne Turnpike North going toward, towards the chamber. Um, the, so what the town is uh, asking the school, because the school owns the parcel that the fire station and, and this uh, building is on, is, is for uh, right for a couple easements. The, the first one is up near the fire station. This is a water line that we would re relocate on the fire station property. The second is on, on the school property. Right now, your sewage is coming out of the back of the back of the uh, building and being pumped over to the Berlin Mall. Uh, that would eliminate that pump station. We would we would at our cost put this gravity line in. It's gravity all the way to this point here, and it's then called an aerial line. It actually comes out of the ground. Um, uh, dual insulated and then comes back up here to, to uh, paint turnpike north at this location right here, right next to the fire station. Um, it's a quite $2 million project. The voters in August passed the bond vote to get this, to, to do this project. We are now in the process of it going through, uh, there's uh, four properties that we're looking to get easements from. One of them is, is um, th this property. Uh, it's, at the end of the day, I think it's a, it's a fairly decent cost savings for the school. You no longer have to maintain uh, your municipal pump station that you have here now. That's conveyed by gravity. Um, uh, the fire station gets a benefit because they eliminate their pump station. And the, the town itself um, it eliminates a 35 plus year old pump station out there behind the Honda dealership, which is if that had to be replaced, it's several hundred thousand dollars for that. Um, so I'm here 
ask for your consideration, Chris. I gave you a copy of a of a draft easement document. It's a 25. We're looking for a 25 foot easement. Uh, our plan is to go down that easement. Okay, it's, it's this line right here, comes up here, and then connects to this other page here, um, uh, where, where we would put in at our cost uh, the gravity sewer line for, for the school, eliminating the need for your Questions for Tom? When you say our cost, this is the town cost? Right now, you, the, the, the pump station is maintained by the school district. Yeah, I understand that. I'm, the cost of the project or the cost of the town or the cost of the bond? You said that our cost would be covered by our cost. The, the cost of the bond. Okay. okay. So so there, so there, there which has no, been there, approved there, by the voters. There would, yeah, there'd be no cost to the school district. So in rough terms, Tom is kind of describing it, coming out of the woods, going behind the building over here, across. Goes underground and up to... Um, Near the gardens, the garden Near area? the garden, goes under the garden. We'll, we'll put it underneath the garden. Yep. Come to this man, it's a manhole here, uh, and here's your driveway yep. right in here. And that's where, well, right where Bob, right where our finger is, where it becomes aerial, goes above ground. And then connects up here to paint turn right north. And I have no idea what kind of disturbance are you talking about to put a pipe in like it's, that? It's, we asked for a 25 foot easement. Uh, ideally, you know, we're, we're operating in a trench like, like this. You're digging a foot we, wide yeah. trench or something like that? Yeah. When would the, during this, over the summer? Uh, uh, ideally, we want to go to bid here in uh, end of this month, February. You get pricing for this later construction in 2019. Are there any connection fees or anything? None. To get it connected, I'm just thinking about what we went through the water system here. So we had some extra work that had to be done on our end. No, we, we this is all going to be under our nickel to get you back okay. in the service. And can I get a copy of this so I can send it to the district's attorney? Actually, do you have one Tom electronically you can send it? I can. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. When you've chosen a contractor, is it possible that we can um, coordinate with them to, in hopes of doing work during the summer? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. It would be a disruption, I'm sure. Of the, that's playground. Yeah. That's what we're fully, talking yeah, about. Fully understand it. And it's th that um, this excavation shouldn't take that long at all. Mm -hmm. It's good digging here. Yep. Yeah. We may be able even just to do it on Saturdays when, when there's no classes. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, I don't have any experience with this for the school. You would typically have. I would have. Our, I would have Scott level. Cameron's office, his attorney that does real estate deeds and easements, look at this and say, "Does this convey? What other questions might we have?" Yeah. Do you have any pictures that show the? So you got the underground pipe, but then when it connects from. The very end of our school property to connect to the paint turn by north. Yeah, you have what that's going to look like. It'll be the uh, you'll, well, you typically see these pipes, aerial pipes crossing bridges, and you know, like a four inch pipe, they're sleeved, they're connected, but it'll, this one will be above ground on stanchions, yeah. and therefore insulated. Correct. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? I, I would just echo what Aaron said. I think even if it meant a way to delay a summertime installation with the use of the playground and the garden get is yeah. really important to us, not during school year. Yep. We can appreciate that. Yep. And Tom, what do you, what kind of a time frame are you looking like at for a decision from us so that you can sooner than later sooner than later go to bid. We have to have these easements all in hand before we can do that. Um, if we have to reroute or split it, um, yep. so the sooner, sooner than later. Okay. So maybe we could put this on for our February agenda. Um, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. I mean, I'm, I'm all in favor of it. It's just, it's just the coordination, and it's just having our attorney look at the easement and probably have to go pull the deeds at the state at the town offices and put that together. Okay. I don't hear anyone with any objections. It sounds like it's a win-win for everybody here. I think so. Um, so maybe we could have a vote on it in February once we've had the easement review. Sounds great.
Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Item 3.2 is the budget draft number three. So I just wanted to give you the draft we talked about it last time. Really, it's just appointing information for the board to have the draft that we concluded on last time. I really just wanted to give it to you in a final version. <coughs> so you received that in there. That included the changes that we had for the um, for the grant funding that we were fearful would go, might go away, uh, and changes in some personnel that we had talked about and did not include the interventionists. So. Does anyone have questions on the budget? I think my biggest question on the budget, and it's more a clarification bill, is the schedule. Um, you know, what, where we are with that, um, and I think as much as anything to talk to the town clerk and the assistant town clerk as lightning rods, but um, today, where today? do we stand today? Today, I'm still on course. I haven't heard anything that's taken us off of course to do a budget election at a different place. As I said back in, I don't think I said it to the Berlin board because it's so early. Rosemary's heard this from me because we talked in a meeting we were at back in December. We've already left our timeline to be ready to prepare a budget for town meeting day if we were to do it by six separate districts. So we need a special election either way. So we're not looking for a town meeting vote. That doesn't mean that it, it couldn't be impossible to do, but it would be really hard to do because of the reports that we have to generate for the town report. Right. We have stopped, we had stopped doing much of the town report pieces um, back in December for the individual districts because three quarters of the town report is, is preparing for the budget vote. Sure. Do you anticipate uh, we'll talk about Berlin now, a, com a conversation uh, debate on our portion of the budget at our town meeting. Uh, no, I do not. It, it'll just be an unknown. It'll be an unknown at that point. Sorry, I wish I had more no, I, it, news for you. And I don't mean to shoot the messenger, I just... Yeah. I'm just still shaking my head. <laughs> I, I understand. It's part of one of the things I said to Krista today, and she was like, okay, so which thing do I do? I said, I don't know, and we'll, maybe we'll know more tomorrow. <laughs> so that's just kind of how I'm, how I'm rolling these days, yeah. which is not, uh, does not instill confidence in either boards or the electorate. No. And how we're trying not. to move forward. But, you know, we have a budget put together here. We have what I think is a very reasonable budget. Mm -hmm. uh, the tax, I mean, I can tell you the tax increases either way. They, you know, they're not that, that astronomical. They're more astronomical and emerged than they aren't emerged budget, as I told you back in December. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay. Well, that answers my question for the moment. Yeah, I, and as and as I've been doing, Peter, with my videos and trying to get information, yeah. I'm trying to. I know I'll be doing one at the end of this week. And I was doing them every two weeks, but since I did one on Friday, I'll be doing another one this Friday. We're all following them, <laughs> where I am. Good. Well, thank you. <laughs> Any comments from the public, either with your town hat on or with your uh, Berlin resident hat on? careful what hat I'm wearing, I think it would be a travesty to not have a budget ready for the voters and in the town report. Um, if you want to shake things up in town, it'll be to not have that information available to folks. But Well, that's kind of where my question is coming from, and I think the information will be available. It's just whether it'll be a moot point to have the discussion, but I think the information it, in, in some form, will be available. It it won't be for the purposes of voting on it at that point, as it usually is. So I'm also wondering what will from the school be put in the town report, because even if you're not going to put a budget in there, it would seem like there needs to be something to address what's going on and that not having one or telling people how they can go about getting that information, realizing that not everybody has internet access. So you can't just say, and you can go see this link because a lot of the people that get a town report and vote 
do not have email or internet access. I'm so, also wondering if there's going to be any questions sure. um, to the voters. Uh, Carl had brought up something recently, but now this goes back a few weeks ago, about potentially having a question to put out to the voters. And I'm wondering if we might see something like that. Did you want to say something, Bill? So at the last meeting, Corinne, we went through what was going to be on the, in the town report for this year, and we're currently putting that together, which are anything that has to do with this fiscal year or the previous fiscal year, as in the audit. Berlin's the one town that publishes the whole entire audit in the town report. Um, so we'll have that information. We'll have the reports from the chair, the principal, the superintendent. I know in my report, and usually I suggest to the chair some things they might have about where we currently are in Act 46. Um, I started writing some of that and have been, you know, how that's affecting this year. So in addition to your report, Bill? My report's mainly going to be on what, what's happening with the transition and why they're... Act 46. You know, what, what isn't in here and what it, you know, because two-thirds of the... Um, of the material, and I can look through my bag, but I don't think I have it with me, which I did last time I was carrying around, because we talked about in December all the different parts of the town report, and that about two-thirds to 75 percent of it was for the next year's budget. So, I mean, some of the things that aren't that aren't in there that, I mean, one thing that's in there that's not part of the budget, but is this current year's salaries for all the staff at U32, Berlin, Washington Central. So we'll put all that information in. It's just what we have towards the budget for FY. 19. There's no good answer. Vera. The other thing is the warning. And everybody's got, except for Vera, has got to run again if you're going to. And you got to. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we Vera was elected in for two years, so she's all set for one more year. Right. <laughs> and here's your transition board. <laughs> Well, he's got to run. He's got to run. Everybody well, else? I don't have to run. No, well, you don't. <laughs> somebody's, <laughs> so, your position does. does. So, Rosemary, right. you'll see, uh, and I want to look at this. I don't think this is correct on our draft warning. No, it isn't. Right here. Because I, I don't know how I missed that one, but I did. But we do have a draft warning, so we're going to have to correct that. Yeah, I got the draft warning. Yeah. And it's not, you it's do. It's not correct. The, the two, three years are right, right. but the other one's not. Because you've got a one of a... One of a two-year, and then three... A one of a two and a two of a three. A one of a two and a two of a three. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you give them the names? So they'll... Okay, Chris is three years. Yeah. yeah. And the current position Peter's holding the three-year are both up. The position Carl is holding goes to a one of a two. And then the vacant position is two of three. And Vera's is the two year. It's not up. And I have a question about the budget. All right, back to the budget. We'll, we are going to get to further board communication and that warning a little bit further on in the, agen in the agenda. But budget. So, I was not at the December meeting. Mm -hmm. But if I'm comparing, we were at a 2%. 2.7% increase yep. back before this. And now we're up to a 3.89, which I get where those are coming from. Okay. I don't necessarily, I'm missing the background on the discussion about the retirement and. Uh, so we anticipate a retirement, and that retirement potentially could bring more costs in, and we're having a teacher return that it's been on leave, which will bring more costs in as well. And then we have a teacher that's currently funded by grants that we're trying to increase flexibility as well as we're anticipating loss of federal dollars to be able to give, uh, have more flexibility in our work. And that's our math mm -hmm. specialist to help support math. Uh, because we're getting more and more, we get the, stricter, the federal restrictions become stricter or more or tighter is probably a better word each year. So those all basically get to the, those differences in the increases. 
So I'm sure by ringing the minutes that there was much uh, conversation about the increase because back here it was at 7.5 percent. Right, right, it was, and that we had we had also put in there an extra interventionist for math because we've heard from the board to increase the math, and you know it was like, which way do you, you know, just mm -hmm. I, what I heard from the board that night was. We can't support the extra interventionists. We can support the extra time, freeing up the time from the math interventionists to be more flexible, our current one. And uh, we understand the staff changes that probably are coming to us. We had a really interesting discussion about the interventionist and um, the cost spreading that would happen under a merger. And whether we were voting on a district-wide budget or we were voting on a Berlin mm -hmm. budget, and how we felt the Berlin voters would not have a tolerance for a seven percent increase. Um, I'm having a hard time with the three point eight. Right. That seems <clears throat> like. Um, and so we ended up not not supporting the interventionist position, although we, you know, did have some. We have had a lot of information about how we're lagging in math scores. Which I, I totally, I get that, and I support whatever we can do to, to help the kids, teachers, staff, whatever, get those scores up. And I realize it comes at a, at a cost. It just, I think we're asking our town for, um, to understand a lot in a very short amount of time, whether it be the budget, the Act 46, the merging, the, I, I just, uh, I have a hard time putting out 3.89%. I do understand it, I do get it. I know I'm one that wants to do more with the math and the numbers, so. And that's just kind of where I'm coming from. Like, okay. Numbers. Do you need any more action? I don't need any more action. This. I mean, I, th I thought I heard from you, and we had a great discussion, I think, last time about the difference between a merge budget and what it looked like for per pupil's expenditure at Berlin compared to the rest of the district and the resources that kids in other schools have compared to Berlin. And I thought that was a fascinating discussion and illuminating. For me, it was. Yep. All right. Anything else on the budget from anyone? Did I hear correctly that with a merge budget, we could be looking at an 11 percent, 11 cent, sorry, 11 cent increase in Berlin on top of what a normal school increase in town increase would be? No. Yeah. You want to? It's a five. That at is one point, I heard seven cents. Yeah, that's incorrect. Seven. We've run it now with CLAs, with the CLAs being in, and it's a. Uh, let me make sure I get the most recent document. The one I had in December was 5.5 cents for Berlin. And that's, is that overall or that's on top of whatever we approved in? That's, uh, no, our your budget. A lot of times artists wrote 11 cents in one of their headings, but maybe that was at the time our budget that we were working with yeah. and the merge. So no, a no merge budget would be a dollar sixty nine four, and a merge tax rate under. Um, well, hold on, I'm just going to go to what's a better a better document. So it's a difference of six point seven cents. It's a four cent increase. This is including U thirty two right now. It was a dollar sixty nine last year, and it would be. I want to make sure I'm reading the right pieces here. I think it's a 6.7 cents increase overall after last year. So not the 5.5 cents you just said. I can cross that one out. It's 6.7 cents. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay. 
I want to check that, Corinne, for you. I've got so many figures going here because of the different ways we've looked at this. Been around for a while. So the other question I have then is, why is it that each of the towns wouldn't be looking at presenting their own budgets as have been happening for many years and then if and when the merge happens merging it together in that I I thought there wouldn't be much of an increase in cost if anything supposedly costs would be neutral or down so wouldn't we be covered by passing by putting forth our own budget and hopefully having it passed. I think some of that is a matter of what we're asking the central office to focus on. Um, and there are a lot of unknowns. Um, so and I, can actually answer, well, I can tell you a little bit more as I've been advised from the Agency of Education. Things change daily, but as of right now, the action that was taken by the State Board on November 28, 2018 told us that we were in a merged state going forth from that day. So there hasn't been, I haven't had anything officially telling me we aren't doing that. Um, and so that requires a district meeting of all five towns. It doesn't require individual meetings of each town. To pass a budget. To pass a budget or to elect people for that next year. Anything that the district operated, that was an order from the state board as we're following Act 46 and 49. Yet still, individually, the schools know what their costs are. Certainly. And what we would like to propose. And what you would like to propose. And in reality, the new budget may be those budgets consolidated because the interim board um, will have little time or energy to create a whole new district budget. Um, and I'm not sure, I think it's their responsibility to implement a new budget, isn't it? it not to implement, it's theirs to recommend to a new board. Recommend. It's the new board's responsibility to okay. have present that to the electorate. So, and we were, uh, the executive committee in August asked us to put it together from the local school composition and then just bring it all together. So we have done that since our plan in August as the executive committee advised. So are you guys looking at recommending this 3.89% budget then? Is that where you're at right now? Whether or not you're recommending this as it stands to whomever? Yeah. yeah, I think that's accurate. All right, any other comments on the budget? That kind of also works into the board communication plan. Um, Bill, can you refresh my memory here? On, is that, are we talking about budget communication here? I don't think so. I, don't th I think it's very different. What's going on with Act 46? I think it's very different from other years. I think it's, it's communications about what the elections are, and I did that this past week in a video that I sent out to everybody. Um, about what is the purpose, what is the local warning and the merge warning that will happen on town meeting day? I believe from what we heard today, but I do not have it confirmed that we probably will not have anything on town meeting day for the merge district, but I don't have that confirmed. And we'll, I mean, if you think about 30 days and right. district authorization, I've got to imagine we're outside of that. Um, but I just, it was, as you saw, as the board members as all, you saw the email that I sent you about 4.40 this afternoon. It was about five lines. So, and they said more to, hold on for more to come. So. But we will be having our, lo our regular local board elections. Local board elections, yep. I think if you look at Article 4 and the way that um, we wrote this up, um, I see how Rosemary's looking at that. Um, and we can talk about that in a little bit. 
Sorry, I'm jumping on you. <clears throat> no, that's okay. We could move ahead to that right So now. I think that's your the board communication plan. It's, a, it's really just updating where we're at, and so people are, as they're confused, but keeping them understanding what we're working on. And then, so you see the warning there. Uh, we had three school directors for three year, three three year terms. I can understand the piece of ones that two are for a three year term, and one is the second two, year two of the three year term. So we can do a better job of piecing that out. Because miraculously, if the merge doesn't ever happen, that's what we need. Either way, that's what we need. <laughs> Either way, that's what we need. Because the the work of this board continues through the end of the year. Through the, through the end of the year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. End, of the, calendar, for end of the school year for until responsibility for operations. July 1st. End of the calendar year for uh, audit. So when the transitional board starts, this board is still in place until June 30th. So this board has authorational authority of the school until June, June 30th, 30th is 2019. And this board, that means this board has to accept the audit and the way it was currently written in the, uh, in the articles of agreement that we've been given by the agency is that, the tran that this board must approve the audit and if the audit is any later, later than December 31st, 2019, then the new merge board can accept it. But I doubt that that will happen the way our audit schedules usually are. We're usually in November when audits come back. So you don't think that there will be any, maybe one thing for the board to do after July 1st? After July 1st, I think there'll be one meeting for that to accept the audit and to dissolve. Okay. And just to clarify, you don't plan on rerunning. I do not. And, and do. I apologize if that's the first time some of you are hearing that, but um, <laughs> I don't plan to run again in March. I don't plan to run for the, um, the newly formed board. I will be a part of the transition, I guess, but if I'm not the transition board, but if I'm not running in March. How do, what does that mean? That was I, my question. Right now, that, that usually, the only way I know what that means knowing now is that he's still part of the transition board. Okay. That's what I know. Um, so, and Carl, I don't know what he plans to do. So you're the one person who doesn't have to run again. Uh, Peter, I don't know what your plans might be, and you don't, don't feel like you have to make an announcement here. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but chances are good we're going to be shorthanded unless we find some people who want to run. So um, I think part of our board communication plan should be that we're going to have these vacancies and encourage some people to, to run for both the local school board uh, to finish up this work through July 1st and maybe one meeting after. Um, and then the new board, uh, our two representatives there will be very important to um, to the continued operation of this district, assuming a, a merger. So if it comes to appointing after March, when your terms run out, how does that work? If I'm the only one left on the board to appoint, does so it go I to can, the select can, board to I appoint? Can, the select board appoints until there's a quorum of the board. Okay. okay. The select board doesn't have any, is the only, that's the only authority they have um, with that, it's been asked before in other towns where they've had that problem, where they've gotten below a minority. So they only go until there's three members to get to the majority. But and nobody has picked up a petition, I'm assuming. Yeah. All I can say is that the town of Berlin deserves better than that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and. Uh, I don't know if that will affect my decision or not, but um, it's crunch time. It's it's a it's a unique time in the town of Berlin for the Berlin Elementary School education for our town. We're all shaking our heads, and but but I don't think we can throw up our hands. I just I agree with you. Uh, now is not the time no. of all times to. We might not like it. We might not agree with exactly. it. Exactly. But we. Somebody still needs to do it. 
the town deserves better than that. Yeah. And this is a very important time, I think, that the town be represented. I, I personally feel less than qualified to represent the town just given the newness of the whole Act 46. You know, I'm, I've been getting up to speed as much as I possibly can. Um, but given the difficulty we've had, um, or you've had getting board members, or the town, the school has had getting board members, I, I would be surprised if someone would volunteer to jump into this mess now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying no. I, I guess yeah. now that I know, Chris, that you're not, I'll have to really and I, and I do just want to say that I'm not um, not running out of frustration or um, some sort of um, opposition or protest, um, although I am frustrated. <laughs> That's not the reason why. It's more about just time commitment and um, other obligations. Um, I agree with you all that it's really important that we have great representation and Peter, I think you sell yourself short in saying you don't know much about this process. Not a lot of people are able to figure this out, this very complicated process out. Um, and I would say you're ahead of the curve. Uh, but we should all think about maybe doing some personal recruitment in case people don't step up, um, maybe finding people we think would be mm -hmm. up to the task and uh, good to represent our town at this really important time if we can explain exactly what they would be doing. Well, all right. Have you considered running for the board? I honestly don't have an answer for that. I, um, I'm feeling like it's very difficult for two people um, to really represent our town, and that's what I struggle with. At the other time, or on the other side, I feel like I at least have been on the board and been through this process um, as funky as the process has been. So I'm not really sure. And I, there's a lot of unknown as far as like time commitment and how often the board would, is gonna, like I think there's still a lot of things to figure out on how that board's gonna work yeah. in the committees. I think that's part of the exciting part of it. Um, <laughs> I'm a guy who likes change. For us, we have the one and two on the schedule of the board members, the merged board members. Yeah. It would be a one in the two years that we end up running for it again. Oh, so, so those first two terms are one and two? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's a three year term, but it's the end of the three year term. Yeah. Technically. Right. That first so time through. At the beginning end of it instead of the other end of it, like it's some of the other towns do. Right. So I have no answer to your question. Okay. All right. Uh, on the warning itself, so we have a slight change there to. Well, I, yeah, I mean, technically, from it went by our attorney. Um, I hear I hear what Rosemary's saying. It could be clearer, so we can amend it if you'd like as a board, or we can leave it the way it is. Which would, the one amendment we would say two three-year school directors and then one, two of three-year school director. And one, and one, one of two. two. Four, yeah, there's four five. Positions. Right, and there are four listed up there. One, you have one two-year term. term. You have three. But it's a, it's a two, three-year terms. Two three-year terms, right, and one two of the third, this last year of the three-year term. And then you're saying the one year, the one two-year term is a one of a two. Right. Right, and that's the... And that's Vera? No. One of two is Carl. <laughs> okay. I'm in a two of, I'm, I'm <laughs> finishing my first year of a two-year term, so mine is... Like, yeah. You're good. Good. Okay. Mine is not on there at all. Carl is the one of a two. The sure. one... It's, Chris's is a three-year. Yep. Peter's, Peter's is, is three a three-year. Three 
Carl is one of two, yep. and the vacant one from my vacancy is two of Can three. Two of three. So what we would need to add there is we would have we would have it be one two year term, two three year terms, and one one of a two year term. So this is one. No. Can you say that one more time? No, I've got it. I've got. I missed it. <clears throat> I one, thought I had one it. One of a one of a two year term. Right, Rosemary? Yeah. You've got yeah. And two three year terms and one of a one two of a three. Two of a three year term. Ah, okay. Got it. And that's based all your on all your comings and goings. A lot of comings and goings. <laughs> Speaking of which, welcome, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> do we need to do anything else on the on the warning? No, but we'll have to schedule a meeting somehow to adopt this. Okay. Because I was trying to have this adopted tonight, and I know... We can't adopt as amended. Um, you could, and we can, but we'd have to have you just come in and sign it. Oh, right. It's up to you. Technically, you are correct, Chris. And then we could sign it at different times as we as we come in. Probably easier than having a meeting. Yeah. Fine with me. Okay. Because I'll explain it to you. Okay. So Vera, would you be comfortable as, uh, as adopting this as amended? And then we could each come in and sign it when we get a chance. Yes, that is fine with me. Okay. Do we think we're clear on the amendment? Bill's got it. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. And we've adopted the warning as amended and we'll each need to come in um, at some point in the very near future I guess. Oh Chris the email you only have it ready which will probably be a day or two now. Okay come in and, and sign that. Over. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda is uh, 3.4 board member vacancy update. Nicole would you like to join us at the table or you can do it from there. I am uh, so our we have a we still have a vacancy on the board and as I understand it you may be interested in that vacancy and if you would like the board to um, consider you for that position and just ask you to maybe speak to the board members you and I have met and, and talked mm -hmm. um, maybe speak to the board members just a little bit on um, why you're interested and uh, what you could bring to the board okay so I recently moved here and I'm here to stay, bought a home here. I have three children here at the school, I'm, but I have five. And um, things I could bring to the table, I've been on a PTO board for five years at the previous school. Um, I volunteered a lot. Um, also, I do construction, so maybe I could help with anything to do with that. But um, a lot of good ideas. I come from a district. So the school that I used to help had 650 kids, so uh, kinder through eighth grade. So um, any decisions we made, uh, it was a Montessori school, a charter school, um, was for them. But I am familiar with the district, um, but I've never been on an actual board like this, but more of a PTO board. And different committees on the board. I ran all kinds of committees. Okay. Good. Thank you. Sure. Um, does anybody have any questions for Nicole? We haven't scared you away yet. <laughs> <laughs> we will take any help we can get. Um, put it that way. Um, so I guess what we would need is a motion from the board to appoint Nicole Ferrier uh, to the vacant position. Um, if the board feels like you want further discussion, we could go into executive session to do that, or we can vote, uh, vote right now. I would make that motion that we uh, appoint Nicole Ferrier and say 
at the same time that uh, I think you come with the experience that all of us have come to this board with uh, when we first came to this board, uh, and mostly as parents and with some experience with some PTA or coaching or what have you. But um, I think you will find that you're qualified and that there's, in this particular year, a big learning curve just because of what we're all experiencing and learning about, but we'll have a new configuration, but our school will still be here, our, our principal will still be here, and we'll, we'll, our kids will still be here, and that's what it's all about. So I'm looking for a second. I'll second. <laughs> all right. Is there any further discussion? Uh, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion carries, and welcome. And thank you. Yeah. So you'll need to visit the town clerk's office to fill out okay. an oath, um, get, make you official, um, and then we you know, welcome you to our next meeting as an official board member. Thank you, Nicole. 3.5 is uh, the Act 46 update, and uh, we've hit on a number of things already regarding Act 46. Um, we mentioned the Articles Committee that's meeting t tonight, the um, Articles Public Hearing that's happening Wednesday, the organizational meeting that has been postponed for the moment, uh, the status of the lawsuit. Um, I, I do have something to bring up in that respect. I've been asked to, um, all of the boards have been asked to sign a waiver to have Judge Teachout participate as the judge assigned to this lawsuit. Um, Mary Miles Teachout uh, is, is assigned. I'm forgetting what, even whatever uh, district this is in Windsor, I think. No, it's in Washington. Oh, it's in Washington. So she's in uh, Washington Superior Court. Um, she has some what could be perceived as a conflict of interest in this case, so she wanted to make that clear to all the parties and get the parties to sign off and say that they're okay with her participating as the presiding judge. And I'll read to you um, what that disclosure is. <clears throat> She's stated that prior to participating in the three, in the three cases rep represented above, referenced above, the undersigned hereby discloses the following circumstances pursuant to Rule 40E of the Vermont Rules of Civil Procedure and Canon 3E of the Code of Judicial Conduct found in Administrative Order 10. The purpose of this disclosure is to give the parties and lawyers in each of the above cases an opportunity to consider whether to waive disqualification. One of the plaintiffs in this case is the Middlesex School District. My daughter, Woden Teachout, is a member of that board. She was elected in March 2017 to a two-year term that ends as of March 1st, 2019, and she has not sought re-election. She has children in the Rumney School in Middlesex and U32 and middle and high schools. Woden has a lot of children. Um, other children of mine have children in the Callis Elementary School, the Newton School in Stratford, and U32 Middle School. I have not discussed any of these lawsuits with any of my children. While the general issue of consolidation has been a subject of public concern since Act 46 was passed. I have not discussed the legal issues raised by these lawsuits with my children. The plaintiff in this case is represented by attorneys in the law firm of Tarrant, Gillis, and Richardson. One of the lawyers is Paul Gillis, a Berlin resident. My husband, Peter Teachout, a professor of constitutional law at Vermont Law School, has recently undertaken a joint project with Mr. Gillis. They're working on a proposal to update the Vermont Constitution volume in the Oxford series on state constitutional law. Work on the proposal has begun. The proposal has not yet been submitted to Oxford and needs to be approved for the project to go forward. If further information about these circumstances is requested or if there's any request for me to be disqualified from the cases on these grounds, please file a written request by January 11th of 2019. All parties who do not object to my participation are requested to file a written waiver of my participation. This includes 
in addition to attorneys and individual parties, resolutions adopted by all school boards and other boards that are parties to any of the lawsuits. Such waivers are also due no later than January 11th. Because of the time-sensitive nature of these cases, electronic copies of waivers and requests will be accepted. They should be emailed to DonnaWaters at Vermont.gov. Um, so what we have is a disclosure of um, this judge's um, relationship to a Middlesex School Board member, children in the school, um, and her husband's work with one of the uh, law firms involved in the lawsuit, and a request that each board um, waive uh, any objection to her participating in this case. Do we have uh, uh, any feedback from the attorneys representing Berlin? They, yeah, they're, they're the ones that sent around and said, please do this immediately. Uh, the group representing the schools said, please put this before your school board. It's, um, they presented a document for us, a resolution to waive objection to the presiding judge. And it reads as follows, the undersigned appellant uh, dash plaintiff in the above captioned action upon receiving and reviewing information contained in the January 2nd, 2019 disclosure, which I just read to you. <clears throat> and upon receiving advice of counsel and the board upon considering the matter in due course, hereby resolves to waive any objection to Judge Teachout presiding over the above captioned matter on the basis of matters revealed in the January 2nd, 2019 disclosure. Um, so our options would be to say, yet yeah, we waive the objection. We don't have a problem with Judge Teachout presiding and think that the judge will act in a fair and impartial manner. Or we could say we think there's a, a bias there um, that can't be overcome and we could object to the judge um, presiding over this matter. What about the advice of counsel referenced in that document? That's, um, they've sent us this and recommended that all boards sign it. So that's our, our, our counsel, our pro bono counsel representing us in the lawsuit um, do want all of the parties in the lawsuit to waive that objection um, and keep Judge Teach out on the case. Is there only one signature that's needed on that? Um, they want an adopted resolution. Um, so the board would vote, and then the one signature is uh, looks like the board chair. There were two things that they wanted submitted by the 11th. I think it was one or the other. Um, objections submitted by the 11th or waiver submitted by the 11th. Okay. So essentially what I'm hearing is that our attorney, the attorney for... Berlin in this case. It's a group of attorneys, right. basically. Um, is sending this document as their uh, recommendation, advice of counsel, that we sign it and waive um, this judge for our case, that waive, waive any objections. So that's correct. I think that's the best advice we have at this point. If um, I, w I would think that if we don't get the waiver or we decide to object, that means it would be assigned somewhere else. Yeah, uh, that's right. that's the consequence. And I don't know if that means a, a delay or um, a different judge with different positions. Um, well, I, I don't have an opinion. I, 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 I mean, I don't know this person or judge, and, and I'm just looking for um, advice of counsel, and you've said that that's, yeah. that, that's what that is. So uh, you know, on that basis, I would move to accept uh, our counsel's advice and, and uh, authorize or what's the term you're looking for? Um, just adopt a resolution to waive objection okay. to the presiding judge. The motion would be to resolve to waive objections to Judge Teachout. Okay. And is there a second? to have our chair sign it with representation from our board. Okay. I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right. 
Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And the motion carries, and I will sign this and um, send it back uh, to the attorneys. Any other items um, for update under Act 46, Bill? Any communication or timeline updates or anything like that we should that we I haven't already just, heard about? You know, if you've been staying with the videos I've been producing, just to try to keep I try to keep those out for anyone in Washington Central. We put them out on Facebook and on Twitter and everywhere else to try to stay up on those things. Um, you know, if you have any questions, as we said, we made a web address is Act 46 at u32.org. So or send me an email. Um, I'm really trying to do updates as soon as I have new information that gives updates, that gives more clarity. Bill, do you have the links for those videos on that page? I don't, think they're more. Really I don't think they're on the page themselves. Because it's a lot easier to point people in one direction instead yeah. of a variety of directions. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get on with that. Are there any other means that are being used to inform folks of what's going on? Like with this potential postponement of the 14th? It's a good question. We just learned about it. Yeah, so, I would uh, say that, Graham, one of the things I've been really diligent about is until I have official information, I don't get out there. With I understand that. Yeah. I mean, once it becomes official, What's the plan as far as disseminating it? it I'm just, not just suggesting just, just, you do just, anything before you yeah. know for sure. Yeah. I'm just wondering how it will be done. As we all. have been using all the electronic forms, we can. Yeah, and, and there's the newspaper. There's, um, you know, to the extent that Dave Delcor does does articles on it. I understand there's some shortcomings to that, but it's, I don't know how else we get. Uh, the word out. I've been trying to be a little more diligent about putting some things out on Front Porch Forum. Um, we haven't used the school email uh, much, the school email list for that much. I don't know what you, you all think about that. I haven't discussed it with you, but um, to keep people informed of what's going on. Um, and then hopefully something in the town report is another to the extent that uh, the school report to the extent that we'll have some solid information on what's happening next. It's a, it's, it's a moving target constantly. And I do appreciate, Corinne, that you, um, you know, whenever uh, I can, I give you some updates and that you're able to put that in your news to know because I know that reaches a lot of people. Too. It still doesn't reach everybody. Else. No, it doesn't. How I was yeah. The problem with putting stuff in the town report is by the time it, you print it, won't be, and it gets yeah. to the people, things have changed. Right, right. And that's, so a handout would probably be better than actually putting it in the town report. Yeah. The town reports are back in time to go home with students before vacation. Yeah. Just to make sure you have that time okay. frame in your mind. Thank you. And we can, I mean, we, we, one year we had to insert a budget. So, I mean, we can do an insert before we ship the books over here to the school for the kids so so you can have it as of that day if you get the inserts printed up and we can do it that's not a big deal thank you all right uh reports to the board uh, administration go ahead right. for a lot from me <laughs> thanks aaron good evening everybody happy new year it's great to be back um Coming back this last week, seeing staff and students refreshed from a good long December break was, was nice. Um, everybody has a copy of my report. Um, I'll highlight some of the things in it and uh, share a couple of other additional things, as things always happen even after we submit <laughs> reports. Um, <clears throat> taking some time with, with, with staff as we're almost halfway through the school year, the semester ending this month. Um, kind of reflecting on what's going well and uh, what we can continue to work on. And, you know, this year was, everyone has felt really positive. Um, the culture has felt really supportive. Uh, teachers feel supportive. We've had a number of new teachers and staff this year. 
um, talking about you know feeling supported as a new a new employee here so that's good um, you know, student behaviors I think are doing well looking at some of our student behavior data uh, compared to last year we're in um, better you know better shape in terms of some of those reports that we get uh, monthly that we can look at um, <clears throat> One of the things that came up that I think is just something good to echo is the, I guess a number of years ago we implemented a writing program and uh, fifth and sixth grade teachers talk about seeing the, the uh, improvements in, in writing, um, and really attributing that to the fact that you know, we have something that's consistent that was implemented a, n a number of years ago and uh, uh, having that program conducted with with fidelity, meaning done done properly, um, they're seeing improvements at the upper grades uh, in, in writing, which is good. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to be doing as a staff this year, I know I've talked about it, but uh, as we get into the second half of the year, definitely taking time to look at student work and student assessments and student data to help uh, improve instruction. Um, I continue to work with, with, with teachers and staff on communication, team building, uh, about norms and, and values. I don't know if you can see in the report, but there's a picture of some teachers and they're doing a, a teamwork game where um, they had to stack these cups using string and rubber bands and they couldn't touch the cups. So I continue to do some things like that that uh, keep us grounded to the fact that we're all here to work together, work together for all kids. Some highlights this past month that have been really wonderful in my opinion. The U32 Middle School Orchestra came to Berlin last month and performed for the student body. Um, it was really wonderful to see uh, some former students and uh, just to see what some of our future students could have the opportunity to do um, in regards to not just band but also stringed instruments. Uh, we had Vermont violin stick around after the fact, and fifth and sixth, fifth and sixth graders were able to uh, uh, play with some of the and try out some of the different stringed instruments. So, we appreciate the U32 Middle School for coming. Um, fifth and sixth graders conducted what they call a Genius Hour in December, and uh, you know they've been doing this for the last couple of years. And actually, the the uh, night I came last last February. Um, the teachers reported out on what this Genius Hour is all about. And uh, what it does is it gives students a chance to research a topic that they're, that they're interested in. So we had, we had as many unique presentations as we did students. Um, everything from um, dinosaurs to, to scorpions to um, art and, and uh, Careers. Um, so whatever students were interested in, they were self-directed in learning and then presenting their learning through through this this process. So it's pretty powerful. Um, as we, you know, kind of wrap up the the holiday season, I just wanted to recognize and just thank the parents for putting on a really great holiday bazaar that we have every year, and volunteers, um, and just the just the 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 outpouring of support, not just with something like the Holiday Bazaar, but other things that we do here at the school with, with mitten tree and, and, and meals for, um, for families. Um, just saw a, a tremendous amount of, of, of care and giving um, from, from parents and staff and, and community members and kids. Um, so um, the Holiday Bazaar is, a tri is an, an annual thing that uh, seeing my, you know, being my first year here, um, really, really nice event where the smiles on the kids' faces really told, 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 told all of it that uh, um, they were happy to be thinking about others during, during that time of year. And uh, just a couple of, of, of other things. Um, Vins is participating again this year with, with us, um, thanks to the support of our PTNA. And uh, this, past, this past Friday, they came to work with fifth and sixth grade for a good part of the day. Um, did everything from um, erosion to um, um, plants. Uh, we have them coming this week when, for kindergarten, talking about uh, um, 
habitats with third and fourth grade as well coming up soon. So we appreciate them coming and the support PTNA gives for them. And uh, just something else that I've been keeping tabs on and speaking about communication and, and uh, web, web pages. Um, we have a number of things on our web page that I encourage folks to look at. We have a Twitter feed, so I, I try to post pictures throughout the week, um, at least I like to think maybe two or three a week. Just some really exciting and different things that, that our, our, our students are doing here. So, you know, check out the web page, check out the Twitter feed so you can see actual photos of, of things that, that kids are doing here. So even if you're not on Twitter, it shows up on yes. the Yes, just the go webpage. right to the web page. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to, you know, tw uh, friend or whatever they want to call right. it. Uh, so you can see what, what's going on. And there's actually two videos that I've, I've, I've created. Um, one about the Genius Hour. And one was more from the first, the first week of school. But uh, um, so you can actually see some of the things that we're doing through our, our web page. Um, so that's it. Unless anybody has any questions about about things. Thank you, Aaron. Any questions? Um, Bill, do you want to handle any of those reports there that that you can under reports for the board? Um, so I can. I will do you finance for you right now. Okay. Uh, there is an action item to transfer funds from the general fund balance on page 12. You'll see we're well above our target of 4%, about 108000 As I talked to you last month, I was going to be recommending that this month that you move some of that into your capital fund. As we've been talking in the articles committee, it's the opinion of Chris Leopold that what articles, what funds come in from into a merged district will stay for the use of that fund. So if you put my funds into your capital project, it would stay for the use of Berlin Elementary School. And uh, so my recommendation is that, and I, I'll probably recommend in June that you take some more of your general fund balance, but until we get there, I would recommend that you move $108,000 to your capital fund. As we all know, we have a driveway and a few other things that didn't get done in construction that could be tackled. That wouldn't have to have a specific earmark? just. What, what happened, the opinion, of, uh, the opinion of Chris is that mm -hmm. you don't need one. As we talked about last week in the Articles Committee, you could have an article, but you can't adjust Article 5 according to the way the articles work. But his opinion is anything that has a restricted fund that's coming in from a merging a district together, mm -hmm. the objective of that, all that money that's in that fund when it comes in, has to be used for that objective. So... Um, we are currently, we haven't, um, as you know, through budget season, uh, Lauren and I were just talking about this today, she's wrapping up a summary of truing up all these. We just went through open enrollment here January 1st, so there were some changes. We're going to get you a, for February, you'll have an updated financial at that point, because uh, some things did change through open enrollment period. <clears throat> Do you want me to just keep going down the list? Sure. Please? Yeah, if there's anything there that you uh, can cover. Executive Committee hasn't met since the beginning of December. I was hoping that was the case because I couldn't remember. <laughs> no, you were fine. Policy Committee hasn't met since then. School Quality hasn't met since then. In negotiations, we've had two negotiations beers on that, so I don't know if you want to talk to that beer or myself. I'll let you. That way I know what is said is okay to say. Uh, well, we've been working on uh, we've been working on one of them, which I can't even remember right now, but we've been making some progress on that. And meeting here in late January. The first two meetings were on the same same topic as same one topic. topic. So it was it's taking like some time. Oh. It's really trying to pull apart some of the working conditions. Yeah. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Um, but we're gonna have three meetings between now and February break, so hopefully we'll get some movement. But this next meeting that we were supposed to have has been postponed. That was postponed because okay. of the district meeting. District meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just they clarifying. Don't, don't, let's, the whole calendar is just like one of those moving targets. I kind of stopped <laughs> looking every time Krista updated my thing. I was like, I'll wait until like yeah. the week of the 14th to yeah. check. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll get on top of that. Um, so that's all those reports, Chris. I do have a question about the executive meeting coming up. Yep. You can't make it. I'm... Uh, I'd rather not make it. Right. <laughs> we have and two because totally of a game. Yeah. Uh, child. We have three important That's items. Involved, yeah. Two of them are maternity leaves for special educators that need to be approved, and one is an acceptance of the audit for Washington Central. So you just need to make we sure you have a quorum. It's at central office at what time? Uh, I don't know. I'm looking at my little device over That's here. Okay. I'll, I can check in, Krista, to clarify. <laughs>
<laughs> if you can cover for me, I would greatly appreciate it. But if you can't, let me know, and I'll. I can, I'll if it's earlier, it's better. It's not even in here, but I know it's on the 16th. I'll check with Crystal. If it's like 4:30 to 6, I it's, can it's make literally it. like after, a half-hour meeting. Matt and I were after six. That's a little more. Difficult. No, I don't think so. We were making it like one of those quick meetings. 5:30 usually. I, yeah, it, let me look. Yeah. 5 5:30. Let okay. me get on top All of right. that. Thank so you. I will let you know. Okay, thanks. Uh, the action agenda, which I've, as usual, skipped around and already did. We already did some of these. Um, 5.1 was appoint a board member, which we did. Um, 5.2 is, is what you mentioned, Bill, approving transfer of reserve yeah. funds to capital fund. So I'll make a motion to approve the transfer of 108000 to the capital fund. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And the motion carries. Uh, 5.3 is recommend membership for an Act 49 committee. That's what we forgot to talk about under <laughs> Act 46 yeah. update. So the Act 49 committee, which is uh, some folks are wandering <laughs> are in for, are wandering in for, they're here for. Um, is a representative membership committee. So it requires instead of this mini small committee that we've been meeting under with one representative from each board uh, to discuss articles, uh, the Act 49 committee would have proportional representation, which means three members from Berlin. Yes. Right? Anything else we need to? It can be, know? it only needs one board member, which Chris, you make that requirement. I'm already there. Peter was willing, so we've got that. The most important thing is that you'll appoint three members. I, I really just, uh, after c consulting with Chris Leopold, it's the appointment. It's not necessarily they're in attendance because whenever that committee means, as long as they have a majority, they have a ruling of the membership. And the work of that Act 49 committee is expected to be brief? That was the expectation. That was the expectation. <laughs> That's my expectation still. I won't say that that is the yeah. expectation. Because it was, we were trying to hit a deadline for the end of this week. And now that deadline may have moved some, which would give more time for the articles committee to. Where is think it about at? Some like, other things. They yeah, have been. The, they have been at U32. Right, but no, not where the oh. location is. But oh. you guys have been meeting as a smaller group anyway. Yes. So some of the work has already been in process. Yes. So what is the status of where you're at? We're at the at articles. We're at a handful. Peter, you tell me if you think anything different after <laughs> well, yeah. attending your first articles meeting. But um, we're down. To, we're at a handful of articles that the um, that the committee would recommend. There was some discussion and no final decision about whether um, it was either you know put it in front of the board and uh, put it in front of the voters in a hurried fashion. Whether that does more damage to the whole confusing mess. Uh, in the first place, or whether this is our only opportunity we need to do is the, the best job that we can to put some statements of what we believe and some guardrails around this new board that's coming in um, while we can to put some you know decent articles forward. Um, I won't go through all of the articles in detail, but there were uh, be okay. between five and eight that uh, we might settle on so and, and be able to agree upon. And that work continues tonight in a few minutes. If we can appoint two more members. Well, it will continue anyway. That's right. And Peter, you are willing? Yes, I'm willing. And even if we appoint someone and they can't attend, we will at least have our, our representation fulfilled for um, the foreseeable future. What is the appointment? I'm process like by this conflict, board? Like we need to appoint somebody tonight because I hear the urgency in you, but I feel like if I have to be that person to appoint and can't be there, a little bit in conflict, but I also don't necessarily support the first, first merger. So, I mean, being that you two are in the same boat, I guess. Yeah, and yeah, I'll just say. I think say, that's fair, and I think. One of the articles is, you know, do we put a statement in there that says um, this, voting on these articles in no way is a waiver of any rights to continue to contest this force merger. It's not a, a statement that we're agreeing with the force merger. Um, so that's been a part of the, of the discussion as well. 
Is it possible to delay it a few days to see what is happening as far as group 14 and so forth? To delay. The greater committee has agreed to meet here tonight to to so that we could appoint and participate. That's right. Can it be changed? Can what be changed? So say you appoint me tonight and then yep. I resign. Or oh, that's another good question. Can somebody else be appointed after? Any thoughts on that, Bill? Did you hear Or that? once I'm appointed, I'm appointed and that's it. I think you're appointed and you're appointed and that's it. And the, I, I just have to, I'm just going to be really direct. Mm -hmm. You need to appoint three people tonight. The committee's been waiting. They haven't been able to, because they can't do anything with the articles. So with Berlin not appointing, they can't even amend them. Okay. And so they so were gracious enough to wait to tonight. We will appoint the three of us. So do I need to make that motion? Sure. Have you already been appointed or no? I'm already appointed, so why don't I make the motion? Okay, why don't you make the motion? <laughs> <laughs> well, am I appointed? I'm You were appointed in December. To the Act 49 yep. committee? Yeah, because that's when I, this is the one board, and I will apologize to you that in December, I said, I think we can do it with one, and literally the next okay. day I was told, no, you have to have proportional. Okay. So. Does it have to be school board members? It does, does not. No. Do we have any other volunteers in the audience? Would you like to? <laughs> you don't want me on that board. <laughs> Trust me, you do not want me on that board. Well, they we can't say who they want. We can appoint you if you'd like to. <laughs> Would you like to? I can't stay for the meeting tonight, but I don't mind going forward doing it. Perfect. It right. If there's not a conflict because I'm the town clerk. Um, I would have to go s look at that because as town clerk, you're not allowed to be on the school board. I'd have to look about that about appointments. I don't know the answer to that. Is it a school board subcommittee? It is. It's, but, a, it's a group. But it doesn't together. require school it board does, membership. Not, it, yeah, it doesn't require school board membership. So I, I just don't know the answer without, without that. I just know the the answer of town clerk and school board. Uh, Corinne, would you like to? No. <laughs> Why do, I think if I, someone resigned, we could reappoint to the vacancy. But I think so too. But so if you're willing to for tonight, if you need a name, let's let's do mine, it because I know okay. I can. Then I will make. Stay for now. If somebody <laughs> wants to check, on yep. If Rosemary could. Okay. You make the motion. I will move to appoint Peter Schober and Vera Frazier as the other two Act 49 Articles Committee members. And what else? That's the second. I that. guess you can second it, oh. sure. I'll second it. And any further discussion? Th those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Thank you very much for your Small town willingness to stand. <laughs> <laughs> Step forward and volunteer. I don't necessarily agree to Rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not All sure right. that anyone does. And we've already approved the town district warning uh, as amended. Uh, one of the last items, approved board orders. Do you have the amount there, yep. Vera? Would you like to so make a motion? motion to approve board orders in $31,344.27. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, no. And the ayes have it, and the board orders are approved. Um, we do have the town sewer easement as one future agenda item. Anything else we want to make sure we place on there for our February 20th meeting? All right, nothing specific. If anything comes up, please feel free to contact me. We've spoken about communication. So is there anything else before we adjourn? Just one thing. Um, I think well, throughout the budget season and with Act 46 and Articles of Agreement for Act 49, um, I think that we have not done some of the things that typically would be on our calendar to kind of touch base on. So if we could, and I'm not sure that time will allow in February, depending on where we're at, if we could just look at the calendar and see what we have missed and what maybe <coughs> strikes out to us as importance of things that we haven't talked about or had reports of. I know there's yep. usually a calendar of different reports that we get, which right. I think we've gotten at some of the full board meetings, but I think there's other things at our local level that we haven't necessarily 
right? Story of our lives for the last three years, but in particular, the last several months. Um, so it's a great idea. I think, you know, the who knows what is going to happen. So we still have our local responsibilities to fulfill. So, um, yeah, maybe we could, let's get that uh, calendar planning on there for the next for the next agenda. Sounds good. Good call. All right. Can I make sure I grab the board orders that are, once they're signed? They are signed. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn. So I'm going to have a loud until 7.30, so I'm going to stay for the first oh, okay, 30 good. minutes. All right. We are adjourned at...